What is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got some more NBA news to of course be talking about with you guys. We recently haven't had a lot of trade news to talk about other than Donovan Mitchell going to the Cleveland Cavaliers which oh my freaking god I'm still a bit shocked at. Still over the moon about and yeah I mean I'm obviously extremely excited to watch my Cavaliers this season but something recently came out that I thought was a little bit cool to kind of talk about and this was being reported by uh chris haynes actually saying that the dallas mavericks have had trade discussions with the new york knicks about cam reddish them even telling cam reddish's manager that they would give him the playing time that he of course was wanting and that he would be a very useful player to their team so again, a lot of people have led to say that the Dallas Mavericks could be trading for Cam Reddish. And again, it came out a little bit ago as well saying that Cam Reddish was requesting a trade and that he did want a change of scenery and wanted to be at a team where he was going to be getting played. Of course, for some reason, Cam Reddish took to Twitter to say he never asked for this, but I think it's very evident that he is straight up capping. It's very obvious he doesn't want to be in New York from the looks of things, and I honestly think that Dallas would be an absolute perfect situation for him to go to, and he would absolutely fit in so well, because the way I see it right now is I think the Dallas Mavericks are set on playing Finney Smith at the four. I also really think they want to play Christian Wood at that five. And now that Jalen Brunson, of course, decided to go to the Knicks for a hundred billion quazillion dollars a year, they're probably going to be looking to change up their rotation quite a bit. First of all, I don't think Brunson's going to be their starting point anymore. I think they're going to rock with the double guard combo of Dimwitty and Doncic, uh, Doncic rather. Having Dimwitty at the one and then Doncic at the two makes a lot of sense. And then I think Finney Smith at the four, and then at the five, they will go with a combination of Christian Wood and JaVale McGee, I think, when they're struggling on defense. JaVale will probably come on when they're going for a much more offensive play. Christian Wood will be there, and I think a lot of time we'll even see Christian Wood and JaVale even share the core at the same time. But the reality is, I think the Dallas Mavericks are still wanting to add a little bit more defense and I also have heard strong rumors that they're looking for another shot creator. A lot of people thought when they brought in Christian Wood they were actually bringing in Christian Wood to be the shot creator to replace Jalen Brunson but it's become very evident by the way that Dallas have spoken about him is that I think he'll very much be treated as a very big glorified role player. Similar to what Kristaps was in Washington, Kristaps even though he had, I mean in Dallas sorry, even though he had a rough you know, last season with the Knicks because of injury and all that stuff and, like, didn't play. He was still an all-star on the New York Knicks. But as soon as he got to Dallas, he was more treated like a a big man center that's just expected to go get boards, but be a role player and set screens for Luka and get a lot of catch-and-shoot open shots, etc., etc. He did it pretty well. He was still averaging around 18 points doing the role. But Christian Wood, I think, will do it much better. I think he's better used to playing a role like that and it will just make sense. So, this would mean that I think they're still going to be targeting a role player, uh, as a, a shot creator, sorry. As it stands right now, they've got Dimwitty and Doncic as the two main shot creators in the starting lineup, with, I think, Tim Hardaway off the bench, but I still think they're looking for that extra guy. They've got a lot of very good role players, like JaVel McGee, a very good one, and now Christian Wood, who, as I said, I think they're going to be trading as that very glorified role player. Uh, and then you got Dwight Powell is still there, Maxi Kleber, all of these type of dudes. Maybe bringing in a shot creator would help out. And I think Cam Reddish would actually be perfect for this Dallas Mavericks team. He's looking to start, he's looking to get up shots, and he's looking for opportunity. He's also an underrated defender. When he was in college, he was a very good defender. Now that he's gone to the NBA, he hasn't been able to show that side of his game style, but I think if you were to permanently put him at the three on this Dallas Mavericks team, he'd actually be able to start there and I think do an incredible and fantastic job. You're realistically looking at a situation where Dallas looked like they had no defense in the playoffs last year other than like Reggie Bullock at times. It was just full offense to them now already saying that they needed to fix the issue. They re-signed Finney Smith to a big long-term deal to keep that defense and the 3 and D type of player. Then they brought in a really good interior dude 
in Javel McGee, uh, who is one of the best interior defenders in the game, as we know. They didn't get rid of Reggie Bullock. They decided to keep him. And they decided to bring in Christian Wood, who I actually think can probably guard the perimeter a little bit better than what Kristaps probably could. I mean, Kristaps just... He, he gave up on defense most times when he played for Dallas. So, even though he's a really good interior dude, at times, he just... I don't know. Something was very off with the way that Kristaps Porzingis used to play for that Dallas Mavericks team. But now they've replaced him as that center. They brought in Christian Wood, who's probably one of the worst interior centers in the league in terms of defense. Don't get me wrong, but the dude can still go out to the perimeter and cause some havoc on time. So... I guess that will be all right. He's a smaller dude that can, you know, go out there and venture on. Again, that's that's the benefit, I guess. Having a six foot nine center is they tend to be better perimeter dudes. Uh, but yeah, again, or six foot ten center. But yeah, he he does struggle in the interior. But again, they brought in Javale McGee to fix that. Javale should help out quite a bit. I think the two big pressing issues now is you're still probably looking for a defender and a shot creator. And I realistically think. Bringing in Cam Reddish would do exactly that. He would be able to come in and help out. And I think it would make a whole lot of sense. He could be that shot creator he's always wanted to be. And he'd actually have a purpose on the defensive end of the ball. And then the perfect situation for the Knicks is right now. Is they didn't want to go overboard and trade too much for Donovan Mitchell. They decided to keep all of their picks. And something that I feel like a lot of people don't actually realize if you're not a New York Knicks fan is they actually have quite a bit of draft capital. I mean, the realistic thing is they've done multiple years where they decided to trade away their first round picks. I mean, in 2021 draft, I think it was, they just kept trading them and moving on to next years. And I think they've, I think they've really done that again. And even though they gave up a first, I think it was protected to get Cam Reddish. I honestly think his value is still pretty high in the league where they could definitely draw another first round pick and the reality is the Dallas Mavericks are a really good team that probably aren't going to exactly care about again that first so yeah I believe they got Usman Jang but they decided to trade him on at the time of making this I think they have like a red I think they have like four first round picks next year they've got Detroit's one Washington their own and Dallas which is Crazy. In 2024, they've got their own and like 800 second round picks. In 2025, they have their first round pick and Milwaukee's. They literally have like seven tradable first round picks in the next two to three years. They can add on to this. I genuinely believe they could go to the Dallas Mavericks and say to them, hey, we are looking for another first round pick and maybe another young player. Let's do a deal where you, and, you go and give us that first round pick um, no, I don't think it even has to be protected because I still think Cam Reddish has a lot to offer in the league. And then you, of course, go and throw in, you know, a Jaden Harvey, who's a six foot three, really good shot creator who fell down the draft to pick seven. A lot of people, uh, in the second round, sorry, to so pick 37. A lot of people had him as a first round pick, really solid defender that I think can shot create. He would be a cool guy to bring in. And then again, they can get that first round pick as well. And then I think, yeah, the Knicks are clearly not wanting to play Cam Reddish right now. So, might as well use him to bring in another first-round pick to, of course, I think, go and trade for a player in the future. So, then again, I think it makes sense for both teams. It would work out for both teams, and it would be a cool move. But, of course, if you haven't already, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for all those NBA content and NBA news. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to my gaming channel. And my IRL is for the long channel. Comment your thoughts and opinions down below. Should the Dallas Mavericks, of course, trade for Cam Reddish? Should the New York Knicks trade him away? I definitely would like to know. But as I was saying, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.